Hey, what's up, YouTube? This problem is from um, one of the MIT Integration B qualifying exams. So let's work through it. Solution. So right away, um, an identity comes to mind, right? 1 plus the tangent squared of x. That's equal to um, secant squared of x. Super, super, super useful uh, identity from uh, math, or I guess from trig. And so we can rewrite this as 0 to pi over 3. Um, 1 over secant uh, squared x, dx. Good stuff. Now, uh, cosine of x, it's 1 over the 1 that starts with the other letter. So it's 1 over secant. So secant squared, 1 over secant squared is just cosine squared. So this is 0 to pi over 3 um, cosine squared x, dx. Good stuff. And now there's another identity we can use, a very popular one. Uh, one that is totally worth knowing, uh, totally worth memorizing. Cosine squared is 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. So super, super useful. All of these identities are just like a huge deal. If you had sine squared, it would be the same, except it would be a minus sign. So, so I'm not a big fan of like memorizing tons of stuff, but like these, these are totally worth, uh, totally worth knowing. Uh, yeah, totally worth it. We can break this up into two integrals. So it's 1 over 2. So 0 to pi over 3, 1 over 2 dx plus, and then you do the same thing here, right? Cosine 2x over 2, boom. Um, let's pull out that 1 half, though. Let's write it like this. That's how pros do it. So dx, and we're going from 0 to pi over 3. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, now we're ready to integrate these things, right? So let's do it. So when you integrate, let me come over here. When you integrate 1 half, you just get 1 half x, right? So 1 half x, so 1 over 2x. And we're going from 0 to pi over 3. All right, and then uh, when you integrate cosine 2x, you just divide by the 2. So if you have cosine of a number times x, bx, you just integrate cosine, so you get sine bx, and what you do is you just divide by the little b, right? You can always do that when there's a number there. Again, it's super useful skill. If you wanted to show the work here, you would make a u sub, you would let u equal 2x, etc. but um, let's just divide by the number. So this will be, when you divide by 2 here, well, I'll show the work. Well, no, I'll skip it. It's 1 fourth sine 2x. And the 4 comes from the fact that you get sine 2x over 2 times 1 half, right? So 2 times 2 is 4. And we're going from 0 to pi over 3. Good stuff. Let's keep going here very, very carefully. So when we do the first one, we first plug in the pi over 3. So it's 1 half times pi over 3 minus and then 1 half and then you plug in the 0. Boom. Then you have the plus. Same thing over here. It's 1 fourth sine of uh, 2 pi over 3 minus and then 1 fourth sine of uh, 0. Right, 2 times 0 is 0. Let's keep going and see what we get. So we get pi over 6. Okay, that's okay. This is, this is 0 here. Plus uh, 1 fourth sine of 2 pi over 3. So I got to think now. Let's see. So I know, I haven't memorized, that the sine of pi over 3 sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. So 2 pi over 3 has the same reference angle, right? The reference angle is this one here. Uh, it has the same reference angle. So the value of uh, the sine of 2 pi over 3, which is this angle here, is going to be the same as the value of the sine of pi over 3, except the sine might be different, right? It might be a plus or a minus. So it turns out it's plus, and because that's because sine is positive here, right? On the unit circle, sine is the y coordinate, right? You can think of every point on the unit circle as an ordered pair, cosine, uh, comma sine. So sine is the y coordinate on the unit circle. So y is positive here, and so because we have that, you know, it's like a pi over three. It's two pi over three. It's going to be the same thing. It's also going to be square root of three over two. So square root of three over two. And this one here is 0. Sine of 0 is 0 because on the unit circle, this is the angle 0. 
and sine is the y coordinate. So here the value of y is 0. Um, if that didn't make sense, uh, the whole sine of 2 pi over 3, like if you had to do sine of 4 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3 would be down here, right? Because this is pi, which is 3 pi over 3. So 4 pi over 3 is pi over 3 more. Um, so this would be 4 pi over 3. In that case, it would be negative square root of 3 over 2. So a little bit of a tangent there on just computing a simple value of sine. But a lot of people have a really hard time um, computing uh, these values. So the final answer is pi over 6 plus square root of 3 over 8. Um, and that's it. So I hope this video uh, has been helpful to someone in the world. Um, that's it.